It's one of the world's toughest endurance challenges. The longest ocean race around the planet. Yet its crew are drawn from all walks of life, spanning three generations. Many are novices before completing extensive pre-race training, but even this cannot prepare them for the extremes Mother Nature has in store. From hurricane force winds to squalls that can knock a boat flat. Just didn't see the wave coming. And freezing temperatures to the blistering heat of the doldrums. Think of Dante's Inferno and double it. The toughest, wildest conditions imaginable. All within the confines of a 70-foot boat in the middle of an ocean, often soaked to the skin and suffering sleep deprivation. I did wonder whether that might be it and whether, whether I was going to come back. The stage is set for a roller coaster of emotions and experiences. 40,000 miles, 16 races, 12 identical boats, six continents, one unique challenge. This is the Clipper Round the World Yacht Race. It's time for the Clipper Race to resume. There's a festival atmosphere on the Cape Town waterfront, tinged with some trepidation for the notorious conditions ahead. Farewells and kisses are exchanged, tears shed and big hugs linger. They're ready to go now, so uh, looking forward to it. Slightly apprehensive, but it'll be 21 good days of racing. It's going to be bigger, faster, stronger. But um, I think what we did in uh, getting from Rio to uh, Cape Town um, was a good bit of training for us. This is howling winds, cold, really big waves. If you want a challenge in life, it's the Southern Ocean. And those who've done it have got something to boast about. So this leg from Cape Town to Albany sorts the men out from the boys. It's a tough leg. The Southern Ocean has both inspired and terrified sailors for generations. With countless ships and souls lost, dipping into the infamous Roaring Forties and nearing Antarctic temperatures. It can be testing for even the most experienced sailors. Life is wet, cold and uncomfortable on this Southern Ocean sleigh ride and the racing is relentless. Just last watch, I couldn't feel my toes anymore, and it kind of freaked me out. I was afraid I was going to pull my socks off and find some black toes under there. There's like no recovery time, you know. That's 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 the that's the really hard part. You got to push through, push to your limit, and then push beyond that. So uh, it's really it's really uh, physically trying, and then it gets to a point of mental and emotional. The thought of getting out of a warm bunk into my soggy socks. I thought I can't do this anymore. And I thought I actually didn't have any option. For me now it's a watch the time. That's all that matters. Not Albany, not next week, that next watch. That's all I'm thinking about. Michelle Porter from London is sailing the entire 40,000 miles around the world with the Clipper Race aboard the Northern Irish yacht Derry London Derry Durra. She put her job on hold, sold her flat, and left family and friends behind for this adventure. And it's proving to be more than she could ever have foreseen. No matter what, how, you, how much you prefer, prepared for the race, I don't think you could have known what was going to happen over the last 28 days. Um, I think everyone kind of thought, leaving London, it was a bit of a glory moment. We all left London, we had an amazing time. It's not glamorous, and I think people that signed up thinking it was going to be champagne sailing, it's definitely not, but it is, it's also amazing. There is no personal space, um, and the fa I always find the first couple of days quite hard because there's always somebody that wants to get past you. You could be sat in the saloon and you've got your feet wedged up because that's the only way you can stay balanced. You've got your lunch or your dinner, and there's always somebody that wants to move you, or, and that is frustrating. Sandwiches? Back home, I mean... 
you know, I work for an advertising agency, I live in the city and have quite a good social life. So, yeah, I'm very much the girly girl back home. Um, yeah, love my makeup, love, yeah, my nails in here. <laughs> no nails. Um, hands falling apart from burning on the road. Yeah, so it's not, it's not pretty. You just, you switch into this other life. You're on the boat. You don't think about changing, you don't change your underwear, you don't change your clothes. This pair of shorts lasted me 28 days. I'm sure they were going to walk to the washing machine. But you just, you just switch into the life on the boat. It's, it's, it's amazing how quickly you do acclimatise to it. Two days out of Cape Town and Michelle's team is racing hard through massive swells. It's her birthday and it will become one she will never forget. But as the fleet is battered by storms with hurricane force gusts, the yacht suffers a devastating broach. This is where the force of the wind on the sail overcomes the traction of the rudders in the water, and the yacht rolls violently, being knocked flat, forcing the 100-foot mast down onto the water. Michelle is badly shaken and has a suspected broken arm after crashing into the edge of the cockpit. Not the birthday surprise she's been hoping for. You know, at night it always seems worse, and we'd made it through to dawn, and things were sort of easing off. Uh, yeah, quite happily went to my bunk, the guys had everything under control, and it was just one, one random wave just caught us off guard, uh, smashed the side of the boat, put us on our side, or pretty much past 90 degrees. I mean, it definitely shook the guys up and shook, shook me up as well, uh, having to deal with uh, quite serious injuries at the time. There's no alternative. The crew has to suspend racing and diverts to Port Elizabeth, 200 miles and 36 hours away. It looks like Michelle's race is over and she prepares for the medical evacuation with a rendezvous at sea with a South African NSRI rescue craft. It's a tricky operation to transfer her off the yacht. Michelle heads to port where an ambulance is waiting to transfer her to hospital. Yeah, it's all a bit of a mixture at the moment. I feel a bit, um, a bit numb, a bit sick and also pretty devastated that I've had to leave the boat so I never thought I'd have to step off that boat I've left I sailed with it from London and um, yeah I'm pretty gutted that I'm not doing this leg so I'm hoping that there'll be a speedy recovery and I can go and join the guys in Albany Meanwhile, there's another medivac when a new crew member is injured in a freak accident. His yacht, Mission Performance, immediately diverts to Port Elizabeth and a day later, the local NSRI come out to meet their second clipper race yacht in two days. I, I look the, the whole thing, I mean, when you look at it from, from the time the decision was made, the crew... They, they sailed 275 70 miles uh, in 60 knots of breeze through five metre seas to drop metre safety. So uh, emotionally leaving them, it, it, it was huge because sort of by that stage. And then they t turned around and sailed off to finish the race or to get on with the race. So, so it was uh, really felt like they were my heroes leaving that situation. We were moving up to the bow to do a head sail change. A small wave came over the bow and just knocked me over so that uh, I sat down onto my leg and a second wave that was uh, much heavier hit me square in the back and uh, the cleat was already pressing against my leg and there was just a, a pressure point of my weight and the weight of the wave on that cleat and it just went straight through my leg so uh, um, pretty unfortunate set of circumstances I think. The, the metal cleat went through my leg here and came out here so from what, from what we can see it went under the bone but fortunately just through the, through the muscles there, or through the flesh there.
But the Clipper Race Fleet sails on, two crew down. They survive further Southern Ocean storms and the yachts reach Albany and Western Australia safely. They have covered 3,500 miles since leaving South Africa three weeks earlier. Now a well-deserved traditional welcome and loving embraces. Plus some special crew reunions. After undergoing surgery in South Africa, David limps in to greet his crew and thank them for their heroics in getting him ashore. Thankfully, as the Derry London Derry Dura crew arrive, there too is Michelle, still recovering from severely torn ligaments, but happy nothing was broken, and she's well enough to rejoin the race. It's not what I, I thought was going to happen on this race, but I'm not that devastated that I've missed three weeks. There's a whole rest of the world to sail, so no, good to go.